We're live! Surprise! Hello! This is really bad. I wish we could delete it, but we're live now. So... Nothing we can do. No kickbacks. <laughs> we're here. We're real people. Uh, I'm Megan. This is my husband, Seth. He keeps things interesting. And together... For those of you who don't know, I'm Seth and that's Megan. Did I say it backwards? No, no. You said oh, okay. it right, but that's my account. So I'm going to look only at this camera and not at this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway we're going to talk about what are we here talking about how to become a less picky eater but and how i have to live with that or did live with it yes how you gone <laughs> well it's it's not, sounds so bad anymore is the house mine now here's You're what people really want to know name. here's what people really want to know am i growing the beard oh yeah because the answer is yes but we can't tell my five-year-old, so keep it on the hush, hush Even though we talk about it, ev I mean, he talks about it every day. <laughs> I've never talked about it. I don't remember talking about it. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Only to you, not in front of her, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have so to hear about it every day. <laughs> right, because right now it's in that weird phase where it's, like, not really a beard, but it also is itchy. And so that's what people want to know. This is the hot stuff that you're tuning into before we get into talking about being a picky eater. The stuff that everybody's really wanting to hear. Guys. The behind the scenes, personal. So if you're watching live right now, give me a hand raise. Like, I have an annoying spouse too. <laughs> Can I do a hand raise? How do I do it? You can. <laughs> Just kidding. Um... Let's get focused, though. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm Enough about the beard again. Laser focused <laughs> on this camera. Man. Are you going to tell them what you're doing? I feel I like... I just feel like we don't know what we're doing today. It's so beautiful. I don't want to be outside today and not in here and mm -hmm. in the basement freezing my butt off. Yeah. So. Okay. So what we're going to do today, we're going to... Seth... Um, writes a blog uh, almost every week and what we do is reread it and then we talk about it and kind of help you kind of figure out what that means for your life and everything we write about is for people who are like us who are busy parents uh working and don't have a lot of time to spend in the kitchen or the gym so we come from it from a realistic perspective not someone who's looking to get shredded or uh, jacked, jacked or, all the other fun terms um so that's kind of what we're gonna do today and yeah we're not just gonna say you want to be a less picky eater like just eat your food do it you have to pain yourself to gain yourself <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing people say that's great sometimes okay um no so that's not our approach at all and and so we're just gonna talk about kind of what's realistic and hopefully i can share because kind of my experience dealing with him over the years with my picky eating, with picky eating and and that can help uh, all you other people out there who have someone in your home who is like you yeah so i'm so i'm gonna read through the blog but so if you just would rather read through it tell megan she'll send you the link okay. but we're gonna talk more about it and like go into more detail about all the behind the scenes stuff yeah um i will mention that you made a post the other day about how you were gonna go live with your most picky eater mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're referring to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, <laughs> which is fine, whatever. I don't care. You can call me the most picky eater in the house. I, I think... would almost say you're particular. Yeah, well, that's what I, I'll talk about that more. But um, it's interesting that you say that because I feel like I'm not a picky eater anymore. But I also feel like our kids are not necessarily super picky either because you've done a lot of work to yeah. in, in, reinforce that. Yeah. I, I don't feel like anybody in the house is a trouble eater um, because we were super intentional from as soon as they were not drinking milk anymore. And so, yeah, they still drink milk like as an infant. <laughs> Boobies. Oh my God. This is live. <laughs> I know. You can't say that online. Is that bad? <laughs> People understand how biology works. So I'm going to go get a drink. And I'll be back in a minute. Get one for me too. Okay. So how to become a less picky eater. So 
Let's start with just the idea of like you're a picky eater or you have kids who are a picky eater, someone who is a picky eater such as myself. The idea of having a healthy diet is something that honestly just kind of sounds gross. Like food is a major part of living, obviously. <laughs> but like it's too big of a thing to even think about it, going from being picky to thinking every single meal for the rest of your life is going to be this unpleasant experience. Mm. So that's how I used to feel about it when I was for sure a picky eater. Whether I am now or not can be debated. We, we can talk about that. I'm definitely less picky now. So whether it is you or just someone in your family, becoming a less picky eater for that reason can really be a big feel like a big step. But it's not an impossible roadblock. And there were two specific times in my life where I accidentally kind of experimented on myself and discovered that this was true, that you could... Uh, that this was something that I could overcome. So I'm going to have you learn from my experience. That way you don't have to just kind of stumble upon it. <laughs> so the first experiment was when I was a kid. And I was super picky when I was a kid. And I, I would have preferred to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at every meal. If, it, if my parents would have let me, that would have been what I would have had. That's what I liked. It was the only thing I liked. It wasn't the only thing I liked, but it was close to it. Like, uh... There were other foods I would eat, but if I could have just had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, great. That's it. Then as I grew up, uh, it turned into like a more sophisticated teenage gentleman. My taste became more cultured as well, meaning I added ramen noodles and like Chef Boyardee canned ravioli <laughs> to my menu. You, when we got married, you had a, a cookbook your mom gave you, a man, a can, and a plan. Yes. And so like you could make manly meals out of these Chef Boyardee cans and stuff like that. Which I was so picky even still at that point. I don't know that I even ever made anything out of that cookbook because I would just heat up whatever was in the can. <laughs> that was it. That was it. <laughs> totally. So when I became a little bit older as a young adult, moved out on my own, uh, that's when so this sort of first experiment took place. I had no money. <laughs> <laughs> and I was not about to learn to make these, even this inexpensive, super easy home-cooked meals, stuff that I knew I wasn't, I wasn't going to like. So fast food was my go-to. But even that got expensive yeah. for as much as I relied on it. So a bit too often, I would literally just choose not to eat. Mm -hmm. So side note, if you aren't realizing it at this point, just how picky of an eater I was, you're not paying attention. Because <laughs> I was from very young age up into adulthood, super picky. And it got to a point because I wasn't eating, I felt sick all the time. Not like sick, sick, but just off. Like my body didn't feel like something was wrong. Something, uh, something was not quite right. Felt sick. And I wasn't, I didn't put two and two together and realize that it was because I was literally starving myself. So one day I happened to have a giant meal and I realized that it made me feel better. Like this thing that I had been feeling in my body for days or weeks or however long it had been, I don't remember now, it went away because I had all this food. So that kind of is when it clicked, which is from there on out, when I had the opportunity to eat, I just ate whatever I could. If I went to a friend's house for dinner, I had a serving of everything. Even if I didn't, even if I hated it, mm -hmm. I would just put up, wasn't like, oh, no, thank you. Yeah, I'm putting it on my plate yeah. because I was starving. So you were aware enough to know how bad you were feeling. Yeah. And willing to. I was aware enough because it was it. forced upon me by my own stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Situation yes. side, yeah, you were, the key is like you were aware of how you felt. For most people who don't get to that extreme point, it's not, you're not necessarily going to become aware of it. Yeah. So whether that's you and you have money, so you just feed yourself whatever you want, <laughs> or it's your kids who are not old enough to comprehend and yeah. make that connection themselves, mm -hmm. you're not necessarily going to realize that you're not feeling good because you're not eating well. Yeah, there won't or be not that eating connection. Enough. Yeah. So for me, I started eating all this stuff I didn't like, even if it had mushrooms in it, which are disgusting. <laughs> and after a few weeks, I noticed that I didn't mind certain foods as much. And, mm. and some of it I even started to enjoy and like. So even though it was a, an experiment kind of born out of necessity rather than any kind of like scientific curiosity, let's figure out how I can be 
less picky, <laughs> it did cause me to become a more well-rounded eater. Because you just tried some stuff and you weren't like afraid to try it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I we had a client um, who was trying to eat more vegetables. Uh, she had she I know she liked peas and carrots and maybe a couple other things and and so she set out to try a couple new veggies and there were some she really didn't like but she's like oh you know, I actually like sauteed peppers in my fajitas that's the first time I've ever done that as an adult and that was super exciting for her yeah for sure and and I will say that that's probably a better way to do it than what I did <laughs> it's kind of why I said that just, yeah just going I mean I had a very extreme thing that was happening to me yeah. and so I made it a very extreme response because that was all I knew how to do mm -hmm. I just started eating everything yeah. the point is not that you have to do that but what I realized was, oh, I can actually learn to like these things. Yeah, exactly. So we'll Your get taste buds can change. I'll get more. Yeah, and we'll get more into that in a minute. But I want to give my second experience with oh this. Boy. So kind of experiment number two, and this was only just a couple Is this, years should ago. Should we have a disclaimer? Like, don't try this at home. Not sure. Yes. Maybe on the first one. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, in general, yeah. Get like personalized professional advice for what you should do. <laughs> Don't just follow. This is all informational. <laughs> Either see a doctor or you can hire us as coaches and we'll help you, but yeah. don't just do what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just teaching you some of these principles here that I learned. So this second, this experiment happened just a couple of years ago and I'm sure you remember this, but I decided to start taking a supplement that I hadn't used before. So I'm not gonna say what it was because I don't, matter. yeah, I don't want to endorse it. it we don't really endorse any particular sub yeah. supplements, um, which is a story for another time. <laughs> uh, I, so I don't know how to describe the taste of this particular supplement other than to say that if you imagine the most bitter flavor you've ever experienced okay. and then mix it in your mind, that flavor, mix it with that tang you get when you throw up a little bit in your mouth. Oh. <laughs> That's that's gonna get you in the ballpark. I'm not to gag. <laughs> that's what this supplement tasted like. Not exaggerating. It's so awful. Yeah, I tried to get her to taste it, and for some reason she wouldn't. I don't know. <laughs> but it was so bad, like I almost just threw the whole bottle away of this supplement. I don't remember this. You don't? No. Okay. I don't remember things. <laughs> so. Doesn't matter. The po and I didn't do it for that long, but I, was, I didn't throw it away though. I continued to take it. I decided, let's see what happens. And within within just a few days, the taste became more tolerable. Mm. And then after several weeks, it never got to where I liked it. <laughs> like, I don't think that would be possible because of how bad <laughs> this was. I don't think it would ever get to where I liked it, but it did get to where the flavor didn't bother me in the slightest. Really? It really, yeah, it, it, it didn't go, I'm not saying like, oh my gosh, this is so awful to, okay, this is bad, but I still take, like, it got to the point after weeks where I would take the supplement with some water, and it was, okay, whatever, it was mm -hmm. neutral. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah. At that point, I stopped taking the supplement because I wasn't seeing any benefits from it. Yeah, which is kind of our stance on supplements, it but they, again, that's what I'm stressing. <laughs> a lot of the times. Not always. <laughs> not always. But that was kind of my, my deal with that one was. I'm not seeing the benefits. I'm not going to keep taking it. But if I had seen benefits, the taste alone wouldn't have prevented me from sticking with it at that point. It really was not that bad. Um, despite the fact that it really was that bad when I first started. Yeah. That's so, so interesting. And that's where, okay, so let's go into the takeaway of what you can actually do with this as opposed to just... <laughs> to doing what I did and taste nasty supplements. There's no reason to do that. <laughs> Certainly not an experiment you need to do on yourself. So none of this is revolutionary stuff. Most people are well aware you can acquire new tastes mm -hmm. over time. There, and there are lots of real studies to back that up. Um, and I'm happy to share at least one of them with you because I've got one <laughs> bookmarked on there. But I, I mean... The research is there. The purpose of what we're talking about isn't to tell you that just try new things or whatever, you know, it's yeah. not, not just to say, yes, you can like new things. So there's three reasons why I wanted to share this. One is just for motivation. Because if you have the idea in your head, like I used to, that learning to like new foods is an endless series of torturous mm -hmm. meals, it's not. 
there's no guarantee you're going to like end up liking every single food you try. If you if you're going to acquire a taste for something, it doesn't have to take forever. It was for me it was just a matter of weeks. Yeah. And and practically like in a, a realistic like plan what we do with our clients, sorry the dog's barking, uh is like let's just try one new thing this week. And so out of all the things you're eating throughout the week, it's just one thing. And then you can try it again next week if you like. And then you can go from there. Like it doesn't have to be like I'm gonna eat a new vegetable every day because that's overwhelming and exhausting. Yep. So that was one reason why I wanted to share it. The second reason was just to give you firsthand proof, just mm -hmm. to show you. And not only have I found it possible for my taste to change, my experience has shown me that even the pickiest eaters of my, of, talking about myself here, can learn to love certain foods. And on top of that, having learned from this nasty supplement that I took, I know that the worst case outcome of trying new foods is that if I stick with it, I'll at least be able to tolerate them. Mm -hmm even foods that were completely repulsive to me, yeah, I will get to that. And that's actually, that is one thing I was gonna mention on this video is that that study that I do have referenced here makes it, um, kind of talks about why that happens a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm sure like if you're a mom um, and you've done any research on like feeding your kids, it takes like kids like in babies so many exposure to that food before they're used to it like mm -hmm. you try peas and like ah you know try peas again and like ah and, and it gets like more and more to the point where they're willing to try it and, and that's kind of the same thing for adults i mean adults and kids it just takes that exposure and time to be able to change that taste which brings us to the advice that I would actually give. So you've got hopefully some motivation to do it and some proof that, yeah, this can work and it doesn't have to take forever. Here's the advice. So first of all, if possible, when you're trying to acquire a new taste, it does help if you can mix it in with other foods that you like. Hmm. So in other words, don't just, if whatever, you hate broccoli, so don't just like start eating broccoli. <laughs> Put it in something, put it yeah. in a casserole, or at least have it with a dish that you really enjoy. And that way, most of your meal can still be enjoyable and you'll trick your... That's good you, advice. You will trick your brain into associating the new foods with a more pleasant experience. Well, that's what they do um, in feeding therapy for kids is they have um, foods that they like and foods that they don't like. And they get to kind of alternate back and forth. And so it's not all one big battle. And that's actually, that's what I forgot to say just a second ago was... As you're tasting these new things, what happens is not only can you kind of trick your brain into associating it with a more pleasurable experience, but what happens is there are literally changes in, I want to say it's in like how your saliva works in your mouth, how it changes the taste of these foods mm. so that you learn to like it. Wow. It's not just a mental thing. It yeah. literally, there's something that changes in your mouth and how you're tasting the foods cool. to make it better. Um, so that's the first first kind of tip that I would give. And then the next one is there's no reason to eat any one specific food item. Mm. So pick your battles, choose things that aren't too much of a stretch for you. Remember it may take a few weeks. So you want to be consistent about eating that new food regularly. So don't just do it once, try it, try it for a while, but again, only pick the foods that you feel like, okay, I can manage this one. You don't have to pick the ones where you're like, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing yeah. ever. Whatever, you don't have to eat that one. Well, okay, can I add something there? Yep. Like when when um when that client I mentioned earlier was working on adding new vegetables, um, I encouraged her to make like a, we colored it like green, yellow, and red. Like green was like, yes, I like these, these are good. Yellow is like, okay, I'll give it a shot. Red was like, no. There was a definite no. Yeah. Like you can have those boundaries in the line. And that might change over time, but like, it doesn't have to be, you have to eat all and like all the vegetables. It can be like, well, yeah, maybe I'll try peppers. Mm, okay. Which by the way, is something that's great about coaching is that you literally have someone to look at those foods with you and go, if you're curious, like, well, what do I have to eat this? What do I have? You know, mm. she can look at that and go, no, it's fine. You're, you got this, this, and this, you don't need this. So having that firsthand, like, you're not going to get that from just hopping on a diet, <laughs> but having someone who you can literally just 
get in touch with as quick as an email or a message or whatever mm -hmm. and saying, what should I do here? Yeah. And she's able to help with that. Yeah, we can totally um, like make sure it makes sense for you, like whatever your goals are. It's not going to be like, oh, you have to eat you know, broccoli every day because that's what this diet says. It's like, well, does that really make sense for you to have this? What else can we do that kind of fits your goals and what you're working on and really, really troubleshoot through what makes sense for you and where you're at in your life? Yep. So then my kind of last piece of advice here is take your wins where you can get them. Ooh, I love that. And don't worry about the rest. Just in, in doing that, you're, what you're going to find is that there are going to be different levels of success. So for me, I enjoy eating a lot more vegetables now than what I used to, like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah. That's one that I actually like. Especially, oh, we love. Oh, yeah. It's Everybody one of my favorites. Them, yeah. Even, oh, yeah, our kids fight over. I don't know. If you like. Try to pick them off our plate. If you didn't like Brussels sprouts as a kid and you like them now, like, raise your hand and say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not just, oh, I'll eat Brussels sprouts. I like them. So take that win. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I still don't care for mushrooms. I mentioned that that's something I don't like. That's annoying. But here's the, th <laughs> but here's the thing. I don't have to pick them out of a meal. So whether you're making them, if you were to throw some in, I might complain, but, but I'm going to eat them if they're in there. I'm not going to pick them out anymore. And if you don't have, if you're the cook of the family and you're the picky person, guaranteed you, you're not putting certain things in recipes that you don't like because <laughs> yeah. that's how it works. When you're the cook, you get you're to decide charge. what everyone eats. <laughs> but wouldn't it be nice if you get to the point where you go, oh, this has whatever, this has mushrooms in it. I'm just going to put it in because I know that's it's mm -hmm. something that's going to be good for me and I can get to that point where it's like, whatever, I don't have to eat them. Mm -hmm. That said, there are also things for me like green olives for just one example that that's something that I still can't stand and I have no interest in changing. <laughs> so you can kind of see... That's sad. Have you had a green olive? I love green <laughs> olives. so bad. <laughs> but those are the different levels of success some things you're gonna end up liking some things you're just gonna be like i can eat this and mm -hmm. it's gonna be neutral for me and some things you're still not gonna like so yeah. take those wins where you can get them and anything else just go i don't have to have that totally yeah you don't have to like every and olives by the way are not a vegetable um you don't have to like any and every vegetable or <laughs> I didn't say they were I know, but, but like we've been talking about vegetables and then you listed like three examples and I just wanted uh, to clarify like that's, that's, that's not that. <laughs> okay. So what was my point? Oh, you don't have to like all vegetables to be healthy and you don't even have to have like a massive variety, but you should figure out what you do like and what you're willing to eat so that you can start incorporating more into your diet if that's something you're interested in. Yeah. Overall, I would say that I'm not a picker, picky eater anymore. I, I wouldn't will, say that either. I will, I will concede that I am particular. Mm -hmm. So if I and explain this as easily as I can is if if I have a choice, I'd still rather stay away from certain things. But there are very few foods that I'm that I just won't eat, which means that I have much more opportunity to have nutritious meals on a regular basis. Doesn't mean that I love these things. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to be annoying and whine about certain things <laughs> from time to time. But I'm still, I have so much more opportunity to eat good foods, nutritious foods, than what I ever did in the past. And I very rarely, in fact, I don't even know when the last time was that I had a can of ravioli or ramen noodles from a, like the 25 cent ones. It's been a long time. Yeah. So, I'm still picky-ish, particular, particular, but I, I've but it's definitely done a lot better. It's, it, it's particular in the sense of like you want to have more nutritious, higher quality versus like just I'm not gonna touch that. Like you, you seek out the better tasting foods more than you are picky about anything. It's definitely a giant step up from only eating peanut butter mm -hmm. and jelly sandwiches, mm -hmm. which I still love. Yeah, those even those are upgraded. <laughs> Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, we can only buy one kind of peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. It's I have really a, good. A higher quality peanut butter, higher yeah. quality jam that I use uh -huh. now, and higher quality bread. Yeah, so totally. even that's upgraded, but <laughs> I still eat them. Yeah. Um, so with all that said, sometimes the hardest part is just kind of knowing where to start. Mm. What What's the point of even trying any of these new foods if you aren't sure if the choices you're going to make are all that great to yeah. begin with? 
Yeah. So just navigating through all of the things that you should be doing. Which brings it back to, wouldn't it be nice if you just had a personal coach who you could talk to and ask questions like, are sweet potatoes better than potatoes? Mm. Uh, is rice good for you Yeah. or not? Is rice bad? Uh, White rice? How much of my favorite foods can I still eat and actually still reach my goals? Mm. Questions like that um, are way easier to get the answers to if you have someone who is personally yeah. there for you to answer them yeah. whenever you need to. Take all that guessing out and just kind of help you navigate and figure out what makes sense for you and your life and your goals instead of just a general broad advice. Which is what we do. We do customized one-on-one -on -one coaching and are they available to help you when you actually need it. So there's no reason to ever have to wonder about those types of questions ever again. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any other questions about how to become less picky or how to uh, maybe deal with kids who are super picky eaters, um, message Megan. Yeah, this month um, I'm going to have tons of content around picky eating, special guest speakers, picky eating experts, and just kind of um, navigating through that as adults and as parents of kids who, when you have someone in your household and how to um, build better habits for your kids and yourself. Because the truth is, even if you're not a picker, picky eater and your kids are, a lot of the changes still have to come from you. You can't just be, do this, kids. Yeah. And we're going to be talking a lot about that, but you can't just, yeah, you can't just tell your kids, yeah, you need to eat the broccoli when in reality, like, you're struggling to eat it yourself. They see that. But it's, it's clear to them. So a lot of what we're going to talk about is that mindset and the attitude and the talk that you can have around that and how to just make some changes as a family. Yeah. Do you have any other uh, things you want to say to just get off your chest and complain about me being a picky eater or to, that they can learn from you having to deal with me? Um, don't take it so personally. <laughs> I think, I think actually as I've prepared for the content this month and, and kind of um, really thought about what works in our house is stepping out of that emotional response when someone doesn't like the food that you've made uh, is like one of the biggest things you can do to create a boundary for yourself because you know that you're making something that you've put time and thought and energy into and you know you're doing your best and when someone gives you a response that's I don't like that I'm not gonna eat that like that can trigger a very emotional response in a lot of parents and so being able to recognize like <laughs> that triggers me or that's emotional for me and like stepping out of that emotion for a second and being like okay I understand uh, maybe this isn't your favorite food but this is what I made tonight because mommy is not making another dinner because I'm I have too much going on you know and just having that conversation uh, and we're gonna, I'm gonna be talking a lot more about that, but that's like my biggest thing is maybe take some of that emotion out of it, recognize that you feel that way and, and step out of that so you can begin to move forward. That's a good one. I know that I am particularly difficult to deal with with that too, because I am not the type of husband who just is like, boy, this sure was good if I didn't like dinner. <laughs> Because, be, and I know that I know that that comes from me being a picky eater. Because if I just say, "Ooh, I like this," and that means you start making it every week, then I have to eat it every week. <laughs> That's so true. So I'm yeah. gonna be honest about it because I would rather her know that no, that's not for me. That didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> and we that way we can actually find things too that yeah we all like. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like I don't make. There's some dinners that I like that no one else likes, and I still make them because I want to enjoy them. But there's dinners that the kids love, obviously, and Seth likes that we make, and everybody enjoys them as well, even if they're not our favorites. Not every meal is going to be your favorite. Um, and, and so just kind of having that expectation going in that, yeah, that's not your favorite, that's okay, but that's what we're having tonight is, is kind of the mindset shift you can start to have with your kids and yourself. Yeah. Definitely check out her other videos with the people you're going to be talking to mm -hmm. and all the stuff she's posting this month. If, yeah. if you, if you don't want to miss it, if you've watched this far in the video and you don't want to miss it, um, send me a message, comment here, and I'll make sure to tag you in, or PM you or whatever um, on how to find that stuff so you don't miss it.
Is that it? Tune in next time to see how full the beard oh, has not okay. gotten in the next week. All right. Goodbye. <laughs>